Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hospital Price Transparency Machine Readable File Validator Demonstration. I am Scott Hazelton, a technical advisor for CMS on the Hospital Price Transparency Initiative. Today, I'm going to demo how to use the online validator to check that your hospital's machine readable file, also called an MRF, meets the regulatory requirement to conform to a CMS template layout, data specifications, and data dictionary for purpose of making public your hospital's standard charge information. The online validator is found on the HPT Tools website. As a note, this demonstration does not constitute legal guidance. As I'm sure you're aware, guidance at CMS can and does change, but you can find all of CMS's policies in the hospital price transparency final rule, and you can find up-to-date technical guidance on CMS CMS's pri Hospital Price Transparency GitHub re repository. Including the CMS required template layouts in CSV tall, CSV wide, and JSON formats, corresponding, corresponding data dictionary and examples, and link to the online validator, as well as additional guidance on the Hospital Price Transparency resources page on CMS's website. Beginning July 1, 2024, your hospital's machine-readable file must conform to a CMS template layout, data specifications, and data dictionary for purposes of making public the standard charge information. Details about these requirements can be found on the CMS Hospital Price Transparency GitHub repository. The online validator can be used by your hospital to review your MRF against the form and manner requirements, including, for example, the formatting of required data elements, ensuring encoded values are valid, checking for missing values, and other conditional checks detailed in the HPT data dictionary, which is located on the CMS Hospital Price Transparency GitHub repository. If your hospital's MRF does not conform to the CMS template layout and data dictionary specifications, the online validator will generate an output consisting of errors and warnings. Online validator errors represent requirements that are being enforced beginning July 1, 2024, whereas warnings represent requirements that are being enforced beginning Jan January 1, 2025. You should fix each error and then run your MRF through the online validator repeatedly until no more errors are generated. The first thing we'll cover is how to get to the validator starting from the main hospital price transparency website. On the hospital price transparency website resources page is a link that will take you to the CMS hospital price transparency tools website. Click on this link and then once you're on the tools website, click on the online validator tab. This demonstration is using version 2.0 of the online validator. CMS may update the validator in, in the future to incorporate additional functionality or as a result of future regulatory changes. Before going further, it is, it is important to clarify that the online validator 2.0 does not validate for compliance with all the HPT regulations. Instead, its primary focus is to review whether your MRF complies with the requirement to follow the technical specifications for encoding your standard charging information in a CMS template format. Additionally, the online validator tool runs in a web browser and does not store, record, report, or share any information with CMS related to your hospital's use of the tool. In short, CMS does not track individual hospitals' use of the online validator. We'll run through a series of files that contain errors to give the user some expectation of what to expect from the online validator. The first file contains errors concerning the column headers. The column headers are required to be in rows one and three. This file, we've put the column headers in rows one and four. The user, when dragging the file over and uploading, will be directed to the bottom of the page with the results of the online validator. 
an error description, if an error is found, will be displayed here. In this case, as mentioned, the required headers are not in the correct rows. The validator identifies where the rows are blank, so the user could fix that. The next example is showing what the online validator's output would be if a file is missing a required value. Here, the rows are in the right place, so the file is continued to be valid. The file continues to be validated by the validator. In this case, the plan name, the plan name value inside of this file is missing. You'll get a friendly error message showing what you must do to fix the error. Also, the validator will give you the location of where it had encountered the error. In this case, the CSV cell was uh, on column N, M, and row four. The next file that we are going to be demonstrating is an error with a valid value. So while the value may be may be missing in this file that we just tested, we're going to have a file that actually has a value present, but is not an allowed value. The column setting only allows for fixed values. And the error message that you will see if you encounter one of these errors will tell you what the actual values are that are allowed. In this case, inpatient, outpatient, and both are the only allowed values. The validator has encountered a misspelling of inpatient um, and has flagged that for the user and where it actually found the error. The next file we will be demonstrating is an error with a conditional value. So that means um, there are situations where if some fields or cells are filled in, other fields need to be filled in as well. And the validator will check and catch and flag that for the user. In this case, the file contains a billing code, but not a corresponding billing code type. So as with the previous error messages, we could see that a value is required for this column and a friendly message saying that it is missing. And again, the location that the validator encountered the error. Lastly, we're going to show you a file that doesn't have any errors, but instead has a warning. And I want to remind the audience that warnings represent issues that hospitals must address by January 1st, 2025. And in this case, the drug type of measurement column is missing from, uh, from the actual file. While this is valid on J July 1st, 2024, this will be considered an error on January 1st, 2025. So it would be in your best interest to, uh, to fix these warnings as you're building out these files. Lastly, I want to demonstrate what a valid file result looks like. I have pulled this file from the HPT GitHub repository examples page. So you could do the same and hopefully get the same output that I will be getting right now. So as you can see, no errors are found in the file and no warnings are found in the file. That wraps up today's demonstration. Thank you very much for watching today's video. As a reminder, you can find all of CMS's policies in the Hospital Price Transparency Final Rule, and you can find up-to-date technical guidance on the CMS Hospital Price Transparency GitHub repository, including the CMS required template layouts in CSV tall, CSV wide, and JSON formats, corresponding data dictionary and, and examples, and a link to the Validator 2.0 website as well as additional guidance on how the hospital price transparency resources page in the CMS on the CMS website. For additional information, please contact price transparency hospital charges at cms.hhs.gov.